we will discuss about uh, um, the role of PET CT in the management of uh, rectal cancer. First, we will take in con into consideration some, some practical issues about uh, PET CT. Then uh, we will try to, um, to establish when PET CT may be recommendable to perform. And finally, a little about current research. There can be false positive uptakes in the bowel, which uh, usually they can easily be characterized as physiological uptakes or artifacts, inflammatory processes or infectious diseases prior to chemo and radiotherapy. And there can also uh, be uh, false negative cases, especially with uh, histologies like mucinous carcinomas and in the presence of small lesions below five or six millimeters. Here we can see the typical patterns of uptake in the bowel, such as focal, segmentary, and diffuse, usually corresponding to malignant tumors, inflammatory processes, or physiological uptake. Let's move to the second point. Let's, uh, let's talk about when we may recommend to perform PET-CT in the main fields of rectal cancer, including initial diagnosis, detection of recurrence, a staging and restaging of the disease and in the evaluation of therapeutic response. In the initial diagnosis, Muke and colleagues analyzed the sensitivity of PET-CT in 24 patients, obtaining that uh, there, there was a high rate of detection of the primary tumor, close to 100%, but a low detection of the locorational lymph nodes. In another work, uh, they evaluated its impact in 46 patients obtaining a change in the staging up to 39% and a change in the therapeutic modality using PET-CT only in 17% of the cases. Let's uh, remember that occasionally PET-CT can also diagnose unexpected synchronic tumors, as we can see in this case, with two uh, spots behind the urinary bladder, which corresponded to a rectal cancer and a colon cancer. In the detection of recurrences, Scott and colleagues studied residual lesion suggestive of recurrence, finding additional sites of disease with PET-CT in almost half of the patients, and the change in the management, which was documented in uh, almost two-thirds of the cases. Another group was able to separate benign from malignant presacral abnormalities, with 100% of sensitivity and a very high specificity of 96%.